SpaceX is about to attempt an incredible maneuver they have never successfully executed before. The company aims to land both of Falcon Heavy's boosters on autonomous recovery ships in the ocean. This is easier said than done, though, as a landing at sea presents additional challenges for SpaceX, which they will have to eventually overcome if they want to make reusable spaceflight a reality. Let's talk about how the company aims to accomplish this historic milestone. In the early days, venturing into outer space necessitated a sacrificial offering, a rocket, a one-way ticket to the cosmos. Imagine tethering your precious cargo to this vessel and watching it soar majestically toward the stars. Alas, as the rocket guzzled the last of its fuel, it bid farewell to the cargo, descending into one of three fates crashing mercilessly back to Earth, dissipating into dust in the atmosphere, or morphing into a hapless wanderer in space. This mode of space exploration was awe-inspiring, yet extravagantly expensive, demanding fortunes in the order of tens or even hundreds of millions of dollars per launch. It was a realm solely reserved for the elite, the deep-pocketed few, stifling the potential progress of our entire society. Thankfully, this era is drawing to a close thanks to the emergence of reusable rockets. Reusable rockets, as the name implies, are not confined to a single launch. Spearheading their development is Elon Musk's SpaceX company. In 2015, SpaceX achieved a remarkable feat by launching one of its Falcon 9 rockets into orbit and successfully landing it back on Earth, standing upright. This accomplishment came after five years of persistent effort and numerous unsuccessful attempts. The engineering behind this system was intricate, with a crucial breakthrough involving the abandonment of parachutes for the return journey. Instead, the rocket's descent was precisely controlled using thrusters. After separating from the payload, thrusters located near the rocket's top reversed its direction, propelling the entire apparatus backward. As the Falcon 9 neared Earth, its engines reignited, facilitating a controlled slowdown for a gentle landing on the designated pad. Building upon this triumph, SpaceX proceeded to reuse its Falcon 9 rockets, marking a pivotal milestone in 2017 as the first instance of reusing a rocket capable of delivering payloads to Earth's orbit. Since then, the company has undertaken multiple relaunches, extending this practice to its largest and most potent rocket, the Falcon Heavy. In fact, we are about to witness the Falcon Heavy in action once more, as it is scheduled to launch with the colossal Jupiter 3, the biggest commercial satellite ever built. Known as EchoStar Aquila, Four. The Jupiter 3 is an extraordinary satellite loaded with advanced technology. It boasts a brand new design and impressive features like smaller electronics, powerful amplifiers, and better antennas. With all these innovations, it can achieve an incredible speed of 500 GBPs. Inside the Jupiter 3, you'll find 18 patented advancements that allow it to provide concentrated capacity where it matters most. While everyone talks about small satellites, this giant reminds us that bigger spacecraft still have a special role to play. Imagine a folded-up Jupiter 3, roughly the size of a school bus. It weighs around 9 metric tons and can deliver an astonishing 500 gigabits per second of internet speed in North and South America. This means more people in these regions can enjoy high-speed internet access. The launch of the Jupiter 3 will double EchoStar Hughes's fleet capacity, allowing HughesNet to add hundreds of thousands of new subscribers. This is a significant breakthrough in satellite communication. Recently, engineers and technicians at Maxar put the Jupiter 3 through rigorous tests to ensure it can withstand the harsh conditions of space. Once these tests are complete, the satellite will be transported to Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida, where it will be launched into space using a SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket. Reaching a geostationary orbit is no easy task, but the Falcon Heavy is up for the challenge. This orbit requires more propellant due to the greater distance, leaving less weight available for the satellite itself. However, being in a geostationary orbit has its perks. The Jupiter 3 will stay fixed in one spot, providing constant coverage of Earth and establishing stronger communication links with the ground. Building Jupiter 3 hasn't been without obstacles. Originally planned for launch in 2021, manufacturing took longer due to the COVID-19 pandemic and extensive engineering work. To make up for the delays, 
Maxar and Echostar reached an agreement to compensate. Mark Weimer, a senior vice president at Hughes Network Systems, is thrilled about the Jupiter 3's capabilities. With more people working, learning, and shopping online, there's a growing need for fast internet connections. The new satellite will offer download speeds of 50 to 100 megabits per second, benefiting those in areas with limited internet access. Hughes has been hard at work creating products and services to meet these demands. Scheduled to launch in August, August. The Jupiter 3's success will solidify SpaceX's reputation as a reliable spaceflight company. However, a failure would not only derail the dual booster landing plans, but also impact future launch contracts for SpaceX. We can only wonder if they can pull off this incredible feat. In the past, the Falcon Heavy rocket has achieved successful landings of its boosters, both on land and at sea. To accomplish sea landings, SpaceX relies on autonomous drone ships for the recovery process. These drone ships are essential for SpaceX's goal of reducing the cost of space launches through reusability. They are a crucial part of the company's long-term program to develop reusable rockets. While the Falcon Heavy has used different landing methods in the past, it has never attempted to land two boosters simultaneously on autonomous drone ships in a single mission. This upcoming attempt has been confirmed through communication with the Federal Communications Commission, seeking authorization for launch vehicle communications and experimental first-stage drone ship recovery operations. The mission, known as Falcon Heavy Mission, 1468, involves three suborbital first-stage boosters and an orbital second stage. Trajectory data will be shared with various organizations, and all operations will be coordinated in advance with the range. The purpose of this operation is to test launch vehicle communications for a mission launching from Kennedy Space Center's LC-39A with drone ship recovery of two side core boosters. The center core will be intentionally discarded and land in the water. This communication confirms that SpaceX will indeed attempt a simultaneous drone landing while intentionally ditching the center stage in the water. Although it may seem routine for SpaceX on paper, this dual landing is far from ordinary. The truth is that Falcon Heavy has never successfully retrieved its center core on the drone ship. In the past, the Falcon Heavy has made only three attempts at landing on a drone ship. Unfortunately, two of those attempts resulted in the core missing the landing platform completely and ending up in the ocean. The other attempt saw the core make contact with the drone ship, but then tip over and explode. However, it's important to note that these attempts took place over four years ago, and SpaceX has made significant progress since then. The company has gained extensive experience and has built a solid track record. If they succeed this time, it will be a remarkable achievement that propels Falcon Heavy to new heights and unlocks numerous opportunities for the rocket. In simple terms, the dual landing that SpaceX is about to attempt is anything but ordinary. The truth is that the Falcon Heavy has never managed to successfully retrieve its center core on the drone ship. In the past, the Falcon Heavy tried landing on a drone ship only three times. Unfortunately, in two of those attempts, the core completely missed the landing platform and ended up plunging into the deep ocean. In the other attempt, the core did touch the drone ship, but then fell over and exploded. However, it's important to consider that these attempts happened more than four years ago. Since then, SpaceX has grown tremendously. They have gained a lot of experience and have proven themselves many times. So this time, they are better prepared than ever to overcome this challenge. If they manage to achieve this astounding feat, it will revolutionize the Falcon Heavy. A successful landing will propel the rocket to new heights and open up a world of incredible opportunities. It will be interesting to see how the booster landing attempt goes down, as there are still a ton of unanswered questions. With SpaceX and NASA aiming to send crewed missions to Mars and the Moon, it is important to ask... Are these rocket landing systems reliable enough for crewed crafts? How much longer until we can finally see astronauts land on the ground rather than parachuting into the sea? Remember to subscribe and hit that like button as we follow SpaceX's progress and hopefully find an answer to these questions.